Ron Campbell, has performed everywhere from the Royal, Royal Albert Hall in London, the Fuji Dome in Japan, the ancient theater of Epidaurus in Greece, to the American Conservatory Theater, Teatro Zanzani, and Berkeley Rep. Ron was the lead clown in Cirque du Soleil's Cusa. His one-person shows include Art Buckminster Fuller, The History and Mystery of the Universe, and The Thousandth Night. His poems have appeared in Pure Slush and Truth Serum Press, Wiser, Lust, and the anthology Verses, Flutter Poetry Journal, Psychic Meatloaf Contemporary Poetry Journal, and Me Poesias, uh, ah, getting there, Poetry Journal. Please welcome Ron. Barbara, I'm just so delighted to uh, be in the company of such great poets, uh, Grace and, and Catherine. Thank you so much. Uh, good to hear your stuff. Uh, so, um, let's see. Uh, I'm an actor, as, as Barbara said, and so, of course, I'm uh, vulnerable and can be hurt by you. Uh, <laughs> One of the things that happens uh, at the end of every show is people come back and there's that dangerous moment where they, they say, uh, oh, you were great. And as actors, all we think of is all the things they didn't say. All, they didn't say fantastic or marvelous or <laughs> sensitive or any of those things. They say great and we fixate on that. And it got me to thinking a little bit about the damage that a compliment can do. So this piece is called Drown me, uh, and the the O and W and N of drown is in parentheses, so it's kind of sorry. Drown me, slander me with compliments, poison me with praise, slather love upon me like it was mayonnaise, batter me with flattery, obfuscate my self regard, pester me with blessings. Don't make me work too hard. Give me a tearful earful, acclimate me to acclaim. Throw out my self-doubt with the bathwater of your gaze. Substantiate all my delusions, berate me with adulation, encourage me with a barrage of sabotage. <laughs> Libel me with sweet nothings, gorge me with something somethings. Corroborate my best suspicions, and in a sea of kisses, drown me. Uh, we have to write bios all the time as an actor. I had to write one for Barbara. Uh, and we always have to write them in the third person as if somebody else wrote them. Uh, when you read a bio, if you go to the Berkeley Rep, the actor wrote that, by the way. Uh, so I thought I'd write one in a more poetic vein. This is called, You Shall Know Me By. You shall know me by my crumbly eyes, the rift in my dazzle, my snide glide, my askance stance, and the crimp in my equator. You shall know me by my chin's icy bristle, my entwined brow, my crow-footed crinkle, and the clench in my facade. If you still don't recognize me, look for my third-rate gait, my needy topple, my lopsided topside, my recalcitrant twinkle. I'm likely in a corner, perched, penchant, a spent serpent, an indolent dent, a go-getter, that went a carcass of memories. Look closer past the disdain stain and the uncracked smile, past the grouch slouch, the pretzel pose, my demeaning demeanor. I'm over here in the mirror, doubt riddled, tear puddled, disgruntled, perfectly 
rumpled. <laughs> Take a good look at this arrangement of limbs and burnt tendons, each hinge cringeworthy, prone, boneless. I'm as old as I'll ever be. Um, uh, join the, the ranks of poets now for almost 20 years. Um, I think poets see things a little bit differently, and right now I'm performing a show where the audience is mainly uh, techies, uh, tech people, uh, and I, I don't relate to them very well, and so this is kind of to them. <laughs> you say, I say. You say tank top, I say amputee shirt. <laughs> you say battle of wits, I say cerebral. You say kindly doctor who specializes in brain transplants. I say friendly reminder. <laughs> you say ears, I say sound nostrils. You say knuckles, I say finger elbows. You say armpits, I say torso crotches. <laughs> you say groin, I say gland central station. <laughs> You say zipper, I say penis flytrap. <laughs> you say morning wood, I say up at Don Johnson. <laughs> okay, maybe I don't say that. You say self, I say multitude container. You say close to enlightenment, I say nirvana. <laughs> Sorry. You say fake to realization, I say had an epiphony. <laughs> You say worry, I say pre-traumatic stress syndrome. You say lousy parallel Parker, I say dentist. You say plans, I say regret babies. You say learning from your mistakes, I say error conditioning. You say undulation, I say undo elation. You say no go, I say stop opportunity. <laughs> you say ingrate, I say ingrate. <laughs> you say worrying, I say pre-traumatic stress syndrome. I say <laughs> you say stupidity, I say intelligence. You say diametrically opposed, I say the opposite. <laughs> you say sunny, I say undercast. You say the beginning of the end. I say the beginning. You say piece of paper crumpled into a ball. I say origami meteorites. Woo! Yeah. Uh, we're in a bar right now, I guess. Yeah. And I, I, I always think of com uh, poems as how you make complaints beautiful. And um, so he you're here today for wine and whining, I think. Anyway. Um, so this, this is a, uh, uh, a kind of bartender's recipe for love. So this is called <laughs> recipe. Love. Take one part dragonfly juice, one part evaporated ice, one wisp of smoke, and add a heaping spoonful of lateral gravity. Combine one part delighter fluid, one part joy venom, and some complicated syrup. Add three awkward glances, two cat calls, and one hubba hubba. Add a twist of fate, a float of hope, and one drop of flop sweat. Stir until dizzy. Ring glass with fingernail clippings or the crushed lenses of a pair of Victorian opera glasses. Garnish with a little umbrella of parchment upon which is written a suicide note or a sonnet. Pour into a mug of burnished moonstone or a hypodermic. Best served in an inny belly button. Um, this poem uh, there's a lot of negativity, as we know, in the world right now, and, and um, uh, George Carlin died, and I wanted to write something along his vein, and so just think of the, 
this is George Carlin. And my favorite quote of George Carlin was, uh, the only thing you liked about religion was the music. Uh, but this is called The Prince. The rules of art are written by the beholder, not the artist. The artist offers a big, bountiful yes, and it sounds like everything. An orgasm and a death rattle, a fart and a cri de coeur. Yes is a question and a call to arms. No is an amputation and a gelding. No is nothing, a cul-de-sac in a track development. No severs the artery, bites the tongue, kills the party, aborts the fetus, fetus scrapes the palate, bombs the hospital of yes. Yes bounces, no sinks forever. Yes shines like the eyes of the eager. No spray paints the monument. No is a sledgehammer. Yes is a fulcrum, the arrow and the bow. No steals. Yes borrows. No leers while yes smiles. No says no to yes. Yes says yes to no. <laughs> No listens, uh, let's go, sorry. Yes listens, and no is deaf and dumb and never dreams. Yes dreams all the time. Yes takes the car out for a drive. No has a head on with a stranger. No runs out of gas, and yes survives on fumes. No gives bad directions. Yes gets lost and doesn't care. No, uh, yes shoots and scores. No sits on the bench. Yes swallows. No vomits. Yes vomits too sometimes. Yes has more fun than no, unless yes needs a little no. No is necessary. No is essential. Yes is optional. Yes is yes-rific. No is a dictator. Yes is a prince. Oh, I love that. <laughs> um, so we all can smile anytime we want to, and we can make a fake smile, and we can we can smile. Anytime we want to, we have we can control our muscles that way. But you know, dogs when they wag their tails, it's kind of the truth. Um, what if we could only smile if we really felt it? Is what I was kind of thinking about. So, and in that case, you'd have to kind of be aware of your smile. So this is called warning. Warning. A smile is like an invitation to the party in your mouth. It's like a cradle of future giggles. It's like a hammock hung between invisible trees. Like a balloon animal filled with the helium of possibilities or a welcome mat for the eyes. A smile can also be like the grill of a Chrysler. Like a parenthesis taking a break and lying down. Like a supine moon, like a ladle of teeth. A smile is like your face popping a wheelie or an upturned scythe. A smile can also be like an anthropological dig in your face where great treasures are revealed, like a harbinger of risk-taking, like a secret agreement, like a fissure in the formality, like a crack in the ice, or a favorite mask. A smile is like a suspension bridge you build between your cheeks where joyous little cars travel all day and all night on their way to fun. <laughs> Warning, many smiles are infectious, even to yourself. <laughs> um, so I am ecstatically, happily married right now. Um, wasn't always so. So, uh, this would be an honest ad at a certain time in my life for marriage. It's 
called operators. Get married today, and here's what you'll receive. The driest of kisses, the longest of sidelong glances, shoulder blades sharpened to perfection, and coffee cooled by the silences between sips. But that's not all. You'll also get someone to cry with, someone to cry because of, an expert blame game scorekeeper, and real-time, hands-on, 24-hour driving instruction. <laughs> but that's not all. If you act now, you'll also receive apologies through gritted teeth. Advice at the top of its lungs. Winces disguised as smiles. Smiles disguised as winces. And laughs given like little wrapped candies. But that's not all. You'll also get stabs of indifference, throat strikes of tenderness, little exhales weighed by the ton, and custom ribcage hand rests. But there's more. Sweatpants and flannel crumpling bumpily where fishnets, fishnets once lured. Accusations written in the code of unwashed dishes. Compliments equipped with luggage racks. And sighs as soft as bludgeons. Operators are standing by. Um, it's National Poetry Month. So, um, I, I, I had a wonderful, uh, I won't do it. This is called Poem About Itself. Poem About Itself. This poem was written on a piece of paper in ink. So there's already something pretty special about this poem, and it just started. <laughs> also, this poem has a purpose. For example, this poem can be used as a coaster, or to buff spectacles, or to wipe the whipped cream off a mustache. This poem can be used for a magic trick, if you know a magic trick. The edge of this poem can be used to get that little piece of food out from between your teeth that's been bothering you, or to crumb a table, or to make tiny yet irritating cuts. This poem can be crumpled into a ball and used to impress a girl with your aim as you toss it into the recycling bin. Or used as fodder for origami. Or for kindling of a very small fire. The ashes of this poem can be collected and blown into the face of an assailant, momentarily blinding him. You can tell this poem, like all poems, wants to be a hero. Oh, yes. uh, I was in Paris, this is uh, in my single days, and um, just imagine a, a free-willing guy in Paris. It's called the W word. She was washing a window, the window of her shop, but when she looked up, our eyes met hard and bright. A perfect slant of sunlight bisected us, haloing her, bluing me. I commented on the name of her shop, 1962. I was born that year, she said. Me too, I lied. We began talking. When she was listening, she tilted her head as if she was trying to help the words pour into her ear easier. The sunlight had its way with her neck. I leaned against the wall. She leaned against the door jam. It was like the building was a vertical bed we were sharing. We talked about travel mostly. And between the words, I saw us hand in hand, chasing trains as they pulled out of stations cooling our feet in alpine streams, making love in the afternoon in high-ceilinged rooms. Where are you from, she asked. San Francisco. San Francisco, we love going there. The W word. <laughs> and the train crashed 
and the stream dried up and the high ceiling room disappeared and high above a plane crossed the sky traveling to some destination making the sun wink Uh, I'd like to end here with a poem about death. <laughs> um, yeah. The day I don't wake up. The day I don't wake up. The day I don't wake up, I won't have to brush my teeth. The day the rigors of life give way to the rigor of mortis. The day the bacteria held at bay by my thumping motor all these years, here in that last thump, the signal to ravage, I won't have to return any emails. I won't have to pay that bill, gas up that car, check that calendar. My calendar will be an ocean of ice. Day after day of blank, day after day of me, not being. I've heard and made my last complaint the day I don't wake up. The day I don't wake up, I won't have to go to the DMV. <laughs> the day the calcium ions of my body, deprived of oxygen, leak into the muscle cells and turn them into little fists, and my capillaries bloom blue in the bag of me, I won't have to fix a faucet or put on a tie. Someone else will put on my tie the day I don't wake up. I will not turn to dust the day I don't wake up, for dust is dry and wet is death, like life. The day I don't wake up is the day my poetic license expires. I could have listened to him all evening long anyway.